Last week, we talked about how we might imagine our Father to be if we look to our Heavenly Father as a model. Today, I thought we'd look at one of the most famous father-son stories in the Bible. It's the story of Abraham being tested by God. This is a multi-generational story. Abraham's father, God, tests him, and that test involves Abraham's son. It's a story that is read by both Jews and Christians and by Muslims, since it also appears in the Quran. Briefly, here's the story. God promises Abraham and Sarah a child, something they had wished for for many, many years. But they're both in their 90s, and when Sarah hears this promise, she laughs. Well, she becomes pregnant, and they have a son. They name their son Isaac, which means laughter. When Isaac was still young, God tested Abraham's faith. He tells Abraham to sacrifice his son. As Bob Dylan wrote, God said to Abraham, kill me a son. Abe says, man, you must be putting me on. But Abe says, yes, sir, will do, sir. So back to, back to the Bible. Abraham doesn't tell anyone. He doesn't tell Sarah. He doesn't tell his son. And off he and Isaac go to the mountains with Isaac carrying the wood for his own sacrificial fire. Once at the mountaintop, Abraham binds his son onto the sacrificial pyre. But before he can sacrifice his son, the angel, an angel appears and offers Abraham a ram in place of his son. In reward for Abraham's faith, God tells, uh, tells him he will bless him and make his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Abraham's faith in God was so overwhelming, so absolute, that he was willing to do anything, including sacrificing his own son. The traditional response, the one that has guided people's reading for many millennia, is that we need not be worried about what we would do, but we should appreciate what Abraham did. Our anxiety throughout is not important. It's Abraham's anxiety that, that is important. After all, we know right from the beginning that this is a test. It's just a test. So we shouldn't even be anxious for Isaac. But this is not the way we read stories, is it? I mean, when we read a novel or a heart-wrenching story in a newspaper or watch an intense story on TV or at the movies, we place ourselves right in the midst of the story. This is true of the gospel stories too. After all, we don't just say, well, Jesus, must have been very anxious as he watched the Romans nail him to the cross. And then when reading about the empty tomb, we say, whew, I imagine Jesus was glad when he was resurrected. No, we're intimately involved. We are part of the story of the cross. We are part of the story of the empty tomb. It is Jesus' story, but it's also our story. What does the cross mean to me? What does the cross, what does the empty tomb mean to me? These are the questions we ask of the New Testament. Today, this story, the story of a man killing his child because God asks him to, is far-fetched. Far Over the years, I've thought, I'd just tell God that he is crazy. I just wouldn't do it. But, we continue to read this story, we talk about it, we debate about it, we argue about it year after year after year. But maybe, maybe I'm asking the wrong question. Maybe the question I need to ask isn't at all, would I kill my son? No, maybe not. The Israelites lived in a different world. 
one that was totally God's world. They lived in God's world. They understood that whatever happened in the world happened because of God. God dictated everything. So they were called to trust, to have faith in an absolute God in everything that happened. We think we live in a different world, a rational world, a world that isn't entirely governed by this thing we call God. There is coincidence, there's accident, there's randomness in our world. We have trouble seeing that our world is really similar to that world 3,000 years ago. And yet in both worlds, in Abraham's world and in our world today, we have to accept, we have to trust, we have to have faith in what is not seen what is not understood, what we can't get our arms around, what we can't hold. And assuming you and I believe in God, an absolute God, a God that is greater than ourselves, we have to trust, we have to have faith in God, just like the Israelites 3,000 years ago. But in our world, this is difficult. We are rational people. We want to live but what we know, what we see, what we can understand, what we can put our arms around. This is the Western world that we live in. We have made amazing discoveries about the universe and how it operates and how it continues to grow. How the, world, how the earth was formed and continues to form. Even how we think and how we evolve. We sometimes believe that we can think our way through all the problems that we face. We believe that there are no mysteries, only things that we just haven't figured out yet. But recently, we have been hit with a mystery on a grand scale. A virus, a simple organism that jumped from a bat to a human, from one human to many humans, and now is killing hundreds and thousands of human beings. We don't have the answers. We have some, we're getting more, but we don't have enough of the answers to stop the virus. And so our little congregation here in San Francisco, we can't get together to worship God today. We won't be able to for a while because we don't have these answers. In time, we hope we will be able to conquer this virus, but it'll be followed by another, more difficult medical dilemma. And we will struggle with that. It is problems like these that call into question our ability to figure everything out, to solve everything. It calls into question our ability to trust, to have faith in our absolute ability to figure things out. And maybe like the Israelites 3,000 years ago, we have to live not by our own wits, not by our own reasoning, not by our own ability. We have to live by faith. We have to live by faith in God, a God that has power greater than ourselves, that can see way beyond what we can see, a God that has absolute power over the world. Like Abraham before us, we have to let go of our rational thought and have faith, absolute faith in God. It's time maybe that we take seriously what the writer of Psalm 46 said many, many years ago. Let go and know that I am God. Abraham was faced with a dilemma and his test was to have absolute faith that God would provide an answer. Maybe not the answer that Abraham wanted. Maybe not the answer that Abraham could even conceive of, but an answer that God would provide. An answer that God would provide for his dilemma. We are tested every day. Maybe not a test as monumental as Abraham's, but each day we are tested. We are asked to have absolute faith that God will provide answers 
to our life. Maybe not the answer we want. Maybe not the answer we can even conceive of right now. But we have to live by faith that God will provide. This is our challenge. This is the question we need to ask every day. Day after day after day. Amen.